Alright, today I'm doing another video in my Lance Truck Camper Upgrade Series. But this video actually applies to all campers that have a similar setup to what I'm doing. What I'm going to be doing is upgrading my manual control roof AC and my manual control uh, LP furnace to a automatic digital thermostat that controls both. Alright, so like a lot of you, I have a Coleman Mach. Uh, this is a 9000 BTU, but even the larger units share the same parts and the same controls. It's just a different head up on the roof. But as you can see, it's got the manual controls. And mine does not have a heating element in it. Some of them do. So you would use these controls to set your high or low cool, your fan, and the thermostat temperature. In addition to the rooftop AC, I have this Atwood uh, propane furnace here. And you may have a different model or a larger version, but they're controlled the same way. And this is the thermostat for the Hydroflame furnace. And really, it's just a switch. There's no nothing powered about it. It's got a uh, spring inside, the thermostat spring, and then you can set your temperature right here. And it's got an old fashioned thermometer right here that just shows you the temperature and a simple on off switch right here. And the problem with these is the only way to really set it the temperature you want is to get the camper to the temperature you like and move this until it clicks off. And that's how you know that you're at that temperature. I want a modern solution where I can control the furnace or the air conditioner with the touch of a button, like most campers. And it's especially important for the AC in the summer because same thing, all you can do is get it to where it's the temperature you want and then move the knob until it just clicks off and then hope that you have it set how you like it. All right, so believe it or not, it's not actually very hard to do make this upgrade. In my case, I just need two parts. The first thing I need is the thermostat. In this case, I'm using the Coleman Mach uh, thermostat and to control the rooftop AC. And it will also interface with my Atwood heater just fine. And we'll be showing you how to make the wiring on that. And then you also need this part here, in my case, for my Coleman rooftop AC. There's the model number. What this is, is it replaces the manual controls right here. So these will no longer be used. And there's this different box that I'll show you in a minute like this up in there, except it uses manual controls. Well, inside of this box, I'll remove the cover here for you and you can see that there's a series of relays. This is where your power comes in. This is where your thermostat wires are here. And there is also a freeze sensor that is included with the kit. It gets plugged in there. So this replaces your manual controls and allows the new thermostat to control your unit in the roof. The only wiring you'll need to run is a thermostat wire from the roof AC over here to wherever your thermostat's mounted. And in my case, I got really lucky because if you look up in here, this wire, which is a thermostat wire, was already tucked up in here and tied off. Obviously, if someone paid for the option, it was already pre-wired. So all I have to do is bring it down here and I'll, you know, make it look nice and neat. But I got the wire here. The wire comes out up inside of here and it's the same thing, it's just kind of coiled off. So that would be the hardest part about this is getting the thermostat wire over to here. But if you have any kind of modern camper, it's probably already pre-wired for it from the factory. So to take this off, first thing we'll do is remove these vents. And then under the cover here, there are some Phillips head screws, there's four of them. And 
two on each side. Well, actually, there's a square head, you know, RV type screw, but we'll remove those four screws and this whole cover will come down. All right, kind of goes without saying, the first thing you want to do is make sure your AC power is completely disconnected. So I just went ahead and unplugged the shore power cable. So I make sure. I've got the four screws out. So the only thing holding this on is these knobs here. But you can just pull them off. Once you get the knobs off, this whole piece just comes down. And if you really want to, you can buy this piece without the holes here. But I think really the only difference is a sticker that covers the holes. So we'll just be covering with a different sticker. Up in the unit here, obviously we'll need to remove this control panel. And to get to that, first thing we're going to do is take off this piece here. This is what funnels your air around. You can see it's kind of taped in right here. We'll just need to lower it so we can get the control out of here. So you're going to have to kind of break the connection if you have it taped like I did. As you can see, we've got this down here. Now we can go ahead and disconnect this plug right here, which, as you can see, is going to fit right under there. And then we will disconnect the wiring, make sure it's off. We'll disconnect the wiring, and that will also thread right into the new box here and get rewired in place. Once that's done, this box actually fits up inside of here. I'll show you how that's done. It's really hard to see, but there's actually a couple screws in there that mount to these little wings here. And then we'll just have to connect our thermostat wires before we tuck it up in there. Very easy. In my case, the 12 volt wires are already connected to the thermostat wire. And then here's the rest of it. Like I was telling you, we're sticking out of the ceiling. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and uh, you know splice into these and probably extend the rest of the wires so they will reach the control box once it's up in here. So we'll just add a little bit more wire to reach that point there. Right now it's pretty much a plug and play operation. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the wiring. And um, this plug just disconnects. We'll take these screws out. Uh, it's pretty easy um, to get to the wires. We'll take the screws out on the front here and then that, remove that panel. And there should be some wire nuts in there. It's just black to black, white to white, and then your ground line. And with everything removed, got our wiring out. This thing just pulls right off once you remove your uh, wiring. And then to make this piece reusable with our new setup, all we will need to do is close this off with some of this foil tape here. That way, when the air runs out, it just doesn't get blown right back up the middle. Very easy. This just keeps it separate from the return air and the discharge air. And then, like I said, we'll make our connections into this piece here. We'll just reuse the wiring. This goes in here. And then, like I said, up inside of here, there are actually some studs that I can feel in a, with a nut on them that will hold that unit up in place. To get this old thermostat off the wall, you just have to carefully pry this piece off. It just snaps on. Then there's a couple Phillips head screws we'll remove, and this will come off the wall. All right, and once you take the screws out, you'll have two connections just screwed on the back, so you just remove those. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is mount the thermostat. This one is a little bit different than the old one, so the space is gonna be a little bit more limited, but it should just barely fit right here. And we'll feed the wire in through the wall and we'll make our connections behind here in the closet, in my case. I'm gonna go ahead and make my connections in the back real quick, and then I can test out the furnace before I go any further with the AC system. All right, so for our purposes today, we got the heat connected, and on my thermostat wires, the red wires, the positive 12 volts, 
there's a white wire coming from the AC in it that was negative, but on the thermostat, the negative 12 volts is the blue wire. This is all on the instruction sheet they give you. All right, so the furnace is kind of a has kind of a weird control circuit. Um, you can either control it with a negative signal or a positive signal. So, like I said, with the regular thermostat, this is a 12 volt line. You would touch these two together in the thermostat and that's what makes the connection. If I connect the white wire which sends 12 volts out when the heat is turned on to the white wire here which is actually the negative line that actually is what switches the relay. It's kind of hard to explain but um, basically you want to connect the furnace control wire that's coming out of your thermostat to the negative furnace wire for your Atwood furnace, if it's the same as mine. Alright, so did you catch all that? So the white wire output is going to our furnace control. We've got our blue wire to the thermostat is your negative. The red wire is the positive. Come around here. We're going to turn the AC on. We'll set it up to like 70 degrees. Flip it over to heat, and our heater should come on. Alright, that's a good sign. Come up here, if we flip it to off, here it click, the gas turns off, and then this will run for about a minute to cool down before it cuts itself off. So we're good, we got our heat hooked up, now we're ready to move on to the AC. Right, so obviously in here we need to make a few more connections. Uh, the wires don't really match color, I've got a gray wire, I've got a green wire. Just hook that up to the gray and the green here. And then um, for the yellow wire, we'll uh, pick one of these other colors, just know what it is. Because these are our only three connections we need to make up there. So we'll go ahead and have our gray and green wires connected for fan low and high. And then your yellow wire is your compressor wire. So we'll go ahead and use the brown wire instead of the yellow in the thermostat wiring. But Goal is to have a very neat and tidy installation, just like it was that way from the factory. And luckily I will not need to extend this wiring because I was able to fish the leftover thermostat wiring that I had over there. I was able to just yank it this way a little bit. So I will have enough now to make our connections up there. So I'll just need to separate this connection here temporarily. Actually just the, the white connection. Need to add the wire to go up to the controls there. Then we'll separate off the rest of this. All right, we've got our 120 volt AC wire secured inside of here. And we plugged in our harness that runs up to the compressor and all that. So we can snap the little plastic cover on. Then we'll be ready to mount this upstairs. I'll probably go ahead and just connect the thermostat wire first and then we'll run it up there. All right. So, we've made all of our connections. So we used our gray wire, which is fan low. We've got our green wire, which is fan high. Our brown wire, which is actually the yellow wire from the thermostat, which is our compressor, and our battery negative, which is our white wire. The freeze sensor just needs to be installed, and it says to put it up in the evaporator, so I just pushed it between the fins, and it says on the bottom center between the first two rows. So jam that up in there, and then these two wires will just connect to here, and be ready to install it up in the ceiling. It did include the kit, these two, these are basically wing nuts, which will hold the control box up there's studs that are sticking out, so you just thread these on once you set the control box over it. So I'm not going to be able to show you that up inside of there, but you'll be able to feel it with your hands when you go to install it. Alright, got everything put in place. Everything's tucked up where it should be. I think we'll go ahead and try it out real quick. So let me connect our AC before I you know, put all the covers back on, make sure everything's working good. Alright, so let's try the fan first. 
That's high. Low. Set the thermostat down below this temperature it is now. Go ahead and flip on the compressor. And there's the compressor. We got everything sealed up, put a little new foil tape on the discharge, and now we're ready to put the cover back on. We'll be done. All right, so there's our finished product. Everything's back together. Let's see if I can find a couple little white circle stickers just to cover where the knobs were. It's not really not worth paying all that money to replace this just to cover that those two holes. But anyway, everything works. Hopefully this video was helpful for you if you're considering doing the same thing. It's a pretty nice upgrade to go from manual controls on your heat and your AC to a fully automatic system. Please like the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you have a question, leave a comment below. We'll see you next time.